Hello my friends, Amy Esther here with another video and today I'm excited to share with you about Hashimoto's disease. We're going to talk about all things Hashimoto's. What is it? How do you know if you have it? What do you do if you have it? We're going to talk about all of that today. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Amy Esther and I have several chronic illnesses including Hashimoto's disease. So that's why we're talking about that today, but I also have some other chronic illnesses. If you're interested in any of those, links in the description below, head over to my channel. You can learn all about all the chronic illnesses I have. And I make videos a few times a week here on YouTube about life with chronic illness. And I try to be positive and happy and joyful while living with chronic pain and chronic fatigue and all these issues that I have. So I want to spread that joy and love with you. So I hope that you will join me and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of those videos because I promise it's going to be a lot of fun. But today we are just talking about Hashimoto's disease. So first of all, what is Hashimoto's? So Hashimoto's disease is an autoimmune disease that affects the thyroid. So thyroid is the butterfly shaped uh, gland in your neck and an autoimmune disease means that your body is attacking itself so the immune system typically when you get a virus or something that is bad for your body will attack that thing help you get better help you get through it heal cuts and bruises and all that those things but sometimes the body gets confused and this is what happens with an autoimmune disease your body gets confused and instead of attacking the unhealthy bad tissue it attacks your good healthy tissue so there can be autoimmune diseases all over the body but Hashimoto's is just where it attacks the thyroid so your body is attacking itself so it can cause a lot of symptoms the thyroid can affect a lot of parts of your body um, it affects your hormones it affects uh, your weight gain and weight loss it affects your digestion it can just do so many things and cause so many issues so what I have found with people with Hashimoto's disease that I have talked to is that we have a range of symptoms and a lot of the time we have more than one chronic illness or more than one autoimmune disease. So I've always thought that was super interesting and it's kind of hard to share all the symptoms of Hashimoto's because they can vary so much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share the ones from Google and then I'm gonna kind of share some of my symptoms. I do have a video here on my channel um, and I will link it down below, it is called my chronic illness symptoms and that's where i list all the symptoms i have from all of my chronic illnesses because i have so many um but in this video i will just share the ones that i think are directly linked to hashimoto's disease so um google says that your symptoms include fatigue and unexplained weight gain um it can cause your skin to be dry and rough you can have hair loss and dry hair it says also common is constipation, depression, enlarged thyroid, fatigue, joint stiffness, muscle weakness, puffy eyes, sensitivity to cold, slow heart rate, swelling in extremities, and weight gain. So those are some of the symptoms that can happen. And like I said, I, I'm in a support group on Facebook, talk to a lot of you here on YouTube and on my Instagram, and it just seems like we can have symptoms all over the place. Um, some other ones that I have are some really awful periods, menstruation symptoms. Um, I have PCOS and I do think it's kind of linked to my Hashimoto's disease. I have noticed a lot of people with Hashimoto's also have PCOS, women I should say. Only something you can get if you are a woman. Um, and it definitely deals with hormones and all of that stuff. And I do feel like when I treat my Hashimoto's, my PCOS, gets better so that's kind of interesting to me um, i also have very severe muscle pain that's one of my most severe symptoms that i definitely think is part of hashimoto's disease and then i have had some recurrent miscarriages and some infertility and so not necessarily saying that if you have hashimoto's you'll be infertile and you'll have a hard time getting pregnant and you'll have a hard time staying pregnant i'm actually pregnant right now as i'm filming this video um, and this pregnancy is going super well um, so you definitely can have a healthy baby, but just know that that could be an issue if you have Hashimoto's disease. And I would definitely speak to your doctor if you're wanting to have a baby. So those are some of the symptoms. If you have different symptoms, I would be so curious to know. Please leave me a comment below. I would love to hear the symptoms that you have, as well as the other people watching this video, I'm sure would be very interested to know in other symptoms that could be part of Hashimoto's disease. Okay, so you think you have Hashimoto's disease. Now, how do you get diagnosed with it? 
this part's really, really tricky. So there are some people who they're sick, they're having symptoms, they go to the doctor, they test them for Hashimoto's disease, doing an antibodies test, testing their thyroid levels, and boom, they clearly have Hashimoto's disease. There are other people who are told they have hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism, and they test negative for the antibodies, so they're just put on thyroid medication thinking it's um, just hyperthyroidism or the hypothyroidism, one of those two, and then there are also people who test positive for the antibodies, their thyroid levels seem normal, and then there are people who have normal or close to normal thyroid levels and their antibodies come back normal. So it's really hard to know if you have Hashimoto's disease. And the reason is because it fluctuates so much. And I didn't know this when I first was getting tested. I was actually tested multiple times and was told that I didn't have it, even though every doctor I went to was like, no, you definitely have this. And then they'd test me, it'd be negative and they'd change their minds. So I was tested quite a few times, maybe two or three times, and it kept coming back normal. And I find out later that the, your levels can go up and down throughout the day. You get a positive today, tomorrow would be negative, vice versa. So with doctors, it's really hard to get a positive. You just get way too much blood test and you never know whether you're gonna get an accurate one or not. So it's pretty hard to get a diagnosis. So definitely talk to your doctor about it. If you get a negative result on your test, then I would keep talking to your doctor if you really think you have Hashimoto's and see if you can get retested, maybe even try to treat it as if it's Hashimoto's and see if that helps because that's what I did and it really, I saw these huge changes and huge differences. So that was part of the reason that I knew I had it. And then for me, I got a body scan in which showed my thyroid had all these little white spots. I think she said they were calcium deposits. Don't quote me on that. There were all these white spots all over my thyroid and one side was much worse than the other and um, that doctor told me that most likely shouldn't about 90 percent chance you have Hashimoto's disease and then when I told her about my history being tested and all my symptoms she was like yeah you definitely have Hashimoto's I started treating it started feeling better and that's my diagnosis story I never once got a positive antibody test I did have a few times where like my thyroid levels would be not right. I don't remember the exact numbers, um, but I would be tested one day, they wouldn't be right, and then I would get retested later and it would look normal again. And so it's just really frustrating because your levels can fluctuate throughout the day. So diagnosis, I'm sorry, that's not very helpful, but it is pretty tricky to get a positive diagnosis of Hashimoto's disease. So if you go to a doctor, most likely their treatment will be hormone therapy, they will give you some hormones that should fix your thyroid levels. If your thyroid is too low in T3, they will give you T3, that kind of stuff. And so that's the most common um, treatment that I have seen that people do. And I was not sure whether I wanted to do that when I first found out I had Hashimoto's. So I decided to go more the natural route and I started doing a lot of research and I came across this really good um, video here on YouTube. I will link it down below if I can find it again, but it was so helpful in learning about Hashimoto's and they gave a really good analogy about using hormones to treat Hashimoto's disease. So what they said was you get scratched by this dog and so you're bleeding, you have these big cuts on your leg and you go into the doctor and they say, okay, let's put some band-aids on it. We are going to clean that up. Um, it's going to be good as new. And then a few months later, you go back in and it's healed a little bit. So they take a few band-aids off. It's looking a little better. And a few months later, you go back and it's worse. So they add more band-aids and they just keep patching up the band-aids, taking them off when it seems like it's healing and then putting them back on when it gets worse. When really the actual problem is that this dog keeps scratching you and that is the issue and you need to get rid of the dog because the band-aids are just covering up the problem that the dog caused when really the dog is going to keep scratching, it's going to keep bleeding, and the band-aids are just covering up the real issue. So I'm sure that this video said the analogy way better than I did, so go watch it if you want more better description of this analogy. <laughs> but basically what it's saying is that when you take a thyroid medication, you're just putting a band-aid on your thyroid 
The real issue though is that your body is attacking your thyroid and it's gonna keep attacking it over and over again and no matter how many band-aids you put on it, you're just gonna have to keep putting on more band-aids and it's just not the best way to treat Hashimoto's disease. It can definitely help with symptoms and help you to feel better, but again, it's just a band-aid covering things up. So that being said, no shame if you use hormones to treat your Hashimoto's totally fine. Like I said, most doctors, that's typically how they treat it. However, from the research I've done, I've just found that that's not the best treatment for it, or at least not the only treatment that you should be doing for it. You need to treat your autoimmune disease because the fact that it's on your thyroid and fixing the thyroid is not the issue. It's that you have an autoimmune disease that is hurting your thyroid constantly, all the time. So I wanna talk about the natural treatment. So one thing that really changed my life, this one's huge, is the AIP Paleo Diet, the Autoimmune Protocol Diet. Now, you might see this diet and be like, no way, I cannot do that, because that's what I thought when I first saw it. It is extremely, extremely, extremely restrictive. It is um, made for people with autoimmune disease. It cuts out things that are high in inflammation. It's very, very restrictive. So it cuts out nightshades, um, which are like potatoes and tomatoes, um, peppers, any kind of spices, most, I shouldn't say any spices, but most spices, nuts and seeds, you can't have legumes, so beans. It also removes dairy and then all grains, which includes rice and oats and all gluten and things like that. So it is really, really restrictive. Um, and then of course, no processed foods. Um, and so I did that for a few months and I was told before um, I started that diet that, my body would not be able to get pregnant and stay pregnant. Um, I was also told that my thyroid looked terrible. I was told all these things about my health and I was having a lot of symptoms. And I started that diet and over a week, I felt significantly better. I had so much more energy, I had a lot less pain. I just felt way, way better. And within two months, I was pregnant and I have stayed pregnant this round. And I 100% believe that is because that diet treated my autoimmune disease. I have never felt better than when I was on that diet. Of course I got pregnant and then all the symptoms of pregnancy came, but totally worth it, totally better than having autoimmune disease symptoms. But the AIP Paleo diet, I cannot recommend it enough. It seriously changed my life. I, I don't know what else to say about it, but I love it, it's amazing. Follow me on Instagram if you want more about it. Um, I have a few videos on my channel about it, but it is an amazing diet and it really, really does treat your autoimmune disease. Um, I read a book about it there. I'll maybe see if I can find that book and link it down below so that you can read it. It was really informational, all the science behind it. Anyways, that is a really good treatment. Some other things you can do, supplements. So I was taking a few supplements, blue sea cucumber. There's a few more. I'll put a clip in here so you can see them. Those are the supplements I've been taking. Um, exercise definitely helps decreasing stress, um, getting better sleep, avoiding your triggers, so whatever that is, if it's cold or heat or certain foods. If you cannot do AIP paleo, I would just recommend gluten-free and dairy-free and processed food-free. Those are the three that I would probably avoid. Um, and from what I've seen of other people with Hashimoto's, those ones seem to help the most. However, if you wanna go all in, if you're really struggling, AIP Paleo Diet, I'm telling you, is the best. Sorry, I keep looking down. I wanna make sure I got all my treatment. Yes, so the last thing I wanna talk about is just the doctor you should go to, typically an endocrinologist because it is your endocrine system. Um, you could also see a primary care or an internist. Most doctors nowadays know about Hashimoto's. So I think really most just like general practitioner doctors would be fine, but if you want really someone who deep dives into the endocrine system, definitely check out an endocrinologist. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos about Hashimoto's and all of my other chronic illnesses. If you have Hashimoto's, make sure you leave me your symptoms down below because seriously, you guys, we wanna know how ours compare. Everyone that's watching this wants to know all the symptoms that happen with Hashimoto's disease. So don't forget to leave that below and have a beautiful, wonderful day.